still just beginning to record yeah it has come it's recording was recording okay it's not showing me okay now it is fine so very good evening to everyone present here and thank you for joining in today for our 43rd idc alumni talk uh, thank you mukul so much for taking the time out to talk to all of us uh, i have the pleasure of introducing you to the audience here uh, you graduated from idc in 1981 the first batch of mdes later you went to kansas to pursue further education and had the opportunity to study under victor papanek you designed the first modular furniture office system in india and then went on to set up manufacturing facilities in nagpur and mumbai most interestingly you run a restaurant in nagpur which i am sure gives everyone a lot of food for thought with that over to you mukul okay thank you nimesh uh, thank you ravi also for setting this up and uh, inviting me for this uh, talk uh i'll i'll uh, actually break my presentation into three parts first i'll be also talking about uh, idc uh, i i'm sure a lot of idc alumni of course are on this uh, are watching this presentation so they can relate to what i'm saying uh next i'll talk about or i'll show you a few of my projects uh, that i've been doing uh or i have done in the in the past whether it is furniture design or uh, architecture also and interiors and last of course i'll be also showcasing uh, the breakfast tour so to begin with uh, idc uh, as as nimesh said that yes i am from the first batch and uh, i passed out in 79 from uh, BRC Nagpur doing my architecture, and uh, on the notice board one day, I saw a, a poster of uh, IDC, IIT, Bombay, and uh, was intrigued by what was written on it. So I hadn't heard about industrial designing. Uh, the word product design came much later. To to start with. I mean, IDC also is industrial design center. So uh, I was wondering what industrial design was, and uh, none of our teachers or professors in the college knew about it. And there was no Google or you know other source. So uh, it was difficult for me. But I, I, what I, what was written on the poster was so intriguing and very interesting that I thought, okay, I should apply for it. so me and my one of my friend uh, we said okay let's go to bombay and you know uh, there was an aptitude test which we gave and uh, we came back by the evening we came to know that we hadn't got into idc so we came back and we nearly missed the bus and uh, to be honest the next day i got a telegram from idc saying that sorry we made a mistake and uh, you are in so report tomorrow to idc so it was a touch and go for me to get into iit actually but my life completely changed friend let me tell you my life completely changed uh, in those two years of idc and uh, what idc taught me and you know what we went through the first batch uh, it was more like a i would say an experimental batch because seven years before that there was diit which was a diploma in iit for industrial design mdes was the first batch so uh, a lot of experimentation was being done on our batch i would imagine but at the same time you know we were very lucky to have some of the best professors uh, from abroad also teaching us and there was this exchange program so we had a lot of uh, professors coming from the us uh from europe and uh, none other uh, other than etore sotsas junior was there for a, for a workshop so we were lucky to have those kind of people also you know uh, 
teaching us. Then the equipment there for the workshops. Now the workshops are very well equipped, I'm told. I was there for the uh, 50th uh, celebrations. And I see a lot of, I saw a lot of changes. So, but at that time, the workshops were being equipped with a lot of new stuff. And we were also happy to go through the process of making all the products on very new machines also. And uh, before I go further, I would just like to uh, take 30 seconds to talk about a professor uh, who is not with us anymore, uh, Professor Girish Agarkar. Uh, who eventually became a very close friend of mine and he used to teach us uh, uh, graphics and uh, drawing. So it was very uh, funny for many of our architects who, who had graduated and come and you know we were being taught sketching after five years of doing architecture. So, But then he was very patient with us but there were still a lot of things to learn from him. Uh, after, after IDC uh, this is a building that we all know. Uh, we didn't have VC at that time, and VC came in much later, I think about three, four years after that, after we passed out. But uh, we had all the attention uh, the first two years, and uh, it was one of the best times in, uh, in my life. And eventually, uh, in the last year, in the second year, rather, we, we have a project to be done. And we had an external guide called NR Jasani from Bombay. I had rather. So I, I took a furniture designing uh, as a specialization, and my thesis was on modular furniture. And the guide was NR Jasani, who had a, one of the biggest factories in Bombay and who was guiding me for uh, the thesis. Eventually, I joined him after uh, passing out from IDC. And, uh, I was with him for a couple of years, and then went, went to the US to Kansas. Uh, I studied for one year there for product design. And this is a kind of, uh, this is the uh, journey that I've gone through after my uh, stint at uh, IDC. Uh, I talked about NR Jasani, and this is the product that I designed uh, in 1984. This is the modular office furniture, the first ever modular office furniture in India. And it was, it was a pride, proud moment for me to be associated with it. And our first client at that time was TCS at uh, Nariman Point. This is their installation that you see. Uh, I also designed the logo for uh, NR Jasani at that time. Coming from IDC, I was expected to do that also. Later on, uh, I came to Nagpur and uh, uh, I also designed furniture, I manufactured furniture here. I even manufactured furniture in uh, uh, Bombay before coming here. That was about for three years. But uh, the bigger factory or my main focus was in Nagpur. And this was the system that we came up with, the MOF system uh, for office furniture. Uh, some of the products I have designed uh, later on for a company called Featherlight. Many of you from Bangalore will know. They, they are not only into chairs, but they are also into modular office furniture. So this is the, one of the systems that I, uh, I was involved with for them. Uh, I was uh, the chief design officer for uh, BP Ergo, earlier known as Blowplast. And uh, this basically is not the system designed by me. It was by uh, a designer called Chris Sykes. But I was involved very actively in this uh, design. And eventually, later on, I designed at least four or five systems uh, for them. But more so was the customization part for uh, all the architects or the, the clients which we were involved in uh, the designing. Uh, later on, uh, I was involved with a company called Kayam, which is an Italian company. With, they have offices in UK and uh, Italy. and uh, we have we were representing them in uh, India for designing, manufacturing, and trading uh, this kind of retail furniture, uh, which was being manufactured in Nagpur. And our clients were, uh, as mentioned here, Reliance, Future Group, Spar, Hyundai, amongst many others. And we also exported to a couple of countries. Uh, while doing all this, I was also uh, teaching. 
uh, product design, interior design, and architecture at two colleges in Nagpur. One is called the uh, LED College, which is an all-girls college, which has architecture as well as interior design. Uh, and then uh, Priyadashini, which is called Piats. And uh, there I was the dean for design. And I was teaching architecture, product, as well as interior design. Both these stints lasted for about 15 years put together. Eventually, in 2007, I started my own uh, uh, firm for architecture, furniture, as well as interior design. And uh, mostly, I'm into designing of interiors now, commercial, residential, as well as institutional. I'll, I'll just go through just a couple of architecture projects, which I'm really proud of. Uh, this is a residence on uh, a 2,000 square feet uh, area one of my friend and uh, this is another project which is just completed this is a rendering but uh, we have just completed this project in in Nagpur. this is an office project when i talked about interiors uh, uh, ravi you asked me about uh, it companies in Nagpur. this is the, one of the biggest companies in Nagpur, which is infocepts and uh, they had uh, asked me to design their interiors for their new office coming up. This was the design brief given. Uh, the CEO didn't want any individual cabins for anybody. They wanted complete transparency and, of course, collaboration and interaction. Overall, this because this was about uh, uh, 15 to 20 kilometers away from the city, it had to be a fun place. People didn't, you know, they had to travel some distance to reach the place. So. Uh, I'll just go through quickly uh, a few uh, to show you a few images of what we did. M most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, you can you can see the the colors, the spaces, how they are created. These are fun spaces for open discussions. Very interactive spaces. We had come up with the concept of pods, which are spaces created within the office for uh, taking care of privacy and any concentration issues. We had breakout areas. And then the fun elements in the office, which people, I mean, they are not only become, you know, Instagramable points, but they also are used. Like, for example, the container here has been converted into a conference room. Or we have fun spaces to work also. The reason I'm showing you this is because there are a lot of elements in this which we designed specially for them. As you can see, there's all uh, it's a 20 seater bus which has been converted into a meeting room and this is the atrium we we had different zones in this uh, uh, office being such a large office on one floor so we had different zones and the, this is a bridge connecting you know two zones in the office this is of course the av room a crash a library again an interactive library you can see the stools coming out stools as well as the uh, the books and of course being an office we also had workstations so uh, but workstations were very rarely used people used to go to all the other spaces that i just shown to work as as i said the corporate areas they didn't have cabins they were all again in the same workstation area i'll just quickly uh, show you a video for the same Infocepts is a business analytic services firm that works for large companies. The work we do is both complex and high value. Seventy-five percent of the employees that we team for such a young and vibrant workforce, we wanted to create a workplace that is open, modern, 
and dynamic. Okay, uh, so this was a, a video showing InfoCeps. Uh, the next one, one project which I would like to share with you uh, is there is a incubator for startups, again by an engineering college here called GH Raisoni, and uh, they have um, they have just started this for uh, startups, and uh, about sixty uh, people can be accommodated here for their uh, for their business ideas. So I'll just go through this small uh, video which shows you Right, so uh, product design over and uh, interior projects. Now, time for the main course. So, I had this place on the ground floor uh, of the building that I stay. I stay on the second floor. My studio is on the third floor. And the ground floor space was uh, there for me. Uh, it was bought as an investment, and I thought I, I should give it on rent to uh, whoever I get the, the best rental. Uh, waited for about a year and a half, and 
figured out that I'm not getting the kind of people that I really want. And uh, this finally somebody came up with a proposal of, you know, having a restaurant there. And I thought, no, I don't want to have a restaurant there in, in, in my building because restaurant timings are pretty odd and, you know, I don't want people to disturb us uh, till about what, 11, 12, 1 o'clock. Like normally when the restaurant closes and the staff goes home, it will be around 12.31. I said, no way. But I thought I had to use that space properly and I, I wanted to um, uh, basically, I don't say, I don't want to call it a retirement plan, but I just definitely wanted to do something which would help me uh, pass my time fruitfully as well as also uh, make some money out of it as an investment. So we we discussed a different models within the family, like it could be a bookshop, a car shop, maybe a chocolate shoppy. But eventually, uh, everything was coming down to only a restaurant because uh, of something that happened uh, uh, to me when I was coming back from Hyderabad once in, in the train and then People ask me, okay, why the idea can't say to starting the restaurant. So the idea when I was coming back from Hyderabad, I wanted to have I was coming back to an empty home because my wife wasn't there at home that day. And uh, I wanted to have nice breakfast before I came home. You know, the train reached early in the morning. And there wasn't a place in Nakur which I would want a particular kind of a breakfast, like like an English breakfast or scrambled eggs and toast and stuff like that. There was a place called uh, India Coffee House, but uh, it wasn't okay. It wasn't the right kind of place I wanted to go. Eventually, I thought, fine, why don't I start something like that? So there was a need for uh, you know starting a restaurant like that with that kind of uh, requirement. And uh, then I thought, okay, I've been traveling a lot abroad. I've been to many countries, especially in Europe. And I thought the European model worked best because then you have the small family-run restaurants, which are all the bistros in France, or you know you have the pubs in the UK. Uh, but most of these small small places are family-owned, so I thought that model would work the kind of best for us. Having said that, uh, when I discussed this with family, it was definitely a no-no. And uh, there was a lot of resistance from the family. Uh, but I can easily say that I had a belief in uh, the idea. And though the family was totally against it at the beginning, and the questions were being asked, you know, how can an architect or a designer, restaurant say, why would you want to start a restaurant? Because there is no precedence in the family. Nobody in our family has actually uh, you know, started a restaurant or running a restaurant like that. But then I think uh, because I had this uh, background of, you know, starting factory and running factories successfully over a long period of time. So this was another entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, the word startup wasn't there at that time. So it was more about being an entrepreneur. So I thought, OK, I've, I've done three, four of them before. So there's no problem in doing another one. The product is different. The designs are going to be different. Uh, though it's a service industry, the rules are going to be a little different. OK, fine. But I think still we can, uh, uh, we should be able to do it. And a lot of travel uh, had given me the confidence that, yes, I can do it. Uh, so eventually, I would say that uh, my perseverance prevailed. Uh, I think the only person who was, uh, who, who was for my idea was my my chartered accountant though he was more a friend than a chartered accountant but uh, he was the only person who said yes okay we'll go about go ahead with it because my gut feel said that yes it's going to work on paper all projects work but eventually they had to work uh, on the ground and my gut said that yes definitely this would work so i did for a fight for my idea I knew what my USP is going to be, which I'll talk about it uh, very soon. Of course, there was some opposition. But 
I, I, I did my market study uh, by going to different cities. I went to Bombay, uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, um, uh, Delhi. Uh, and I figured out that there wasn't a place which served this kind of breakfast or this kind of uh, a menu, a cuisine. Uh, so I thought, OK, let's, let's actually uh, put pen to paper and, and start it. Uh, eventually, I'll show you that, yes, my perseverance did uh, prevail. Now, uh, the concept of the breakfast story. Um, before that, I just skipped a few uh, slides. Let me go back. I have to tell you about the name. Why, why breakfast story? So um, yes, because the menu was based on breakfast. And uh, why story? Uh, it all started with. Uh, having a kind of a brainstorming session at my house where my my family was involved and my son said, okay, why not breakfast story? And he actually mentioned S-T-O-R-E-Y as a story, as, as, as a ground floor, you know, that story would be uh, the breakfast story. But uh, then we thought, okay, let's drop the E and let's, let's tell the people that, you know, about the stories. Uh, basically how, you know, the stories would be actually made here at at this particular place so that is the reason why we had the name as breakfast story and he himself has designed this beautiful logo uh, which is a kind of a retro uh, uh, logo and uh, i hope he's watching kevalia uh, he's the one who designed this and uh, yes uh, back to where we were so as i said uh, I wanted the, the, the restaurant to be an extension of my home so that the guests coming here, they would not you know, feel that they have come to a restaurant, but they have come to a very you know, homely kind of a place where they get positive vibes and uh, you know, they love to be here. Uh, so that basically was the concept. And that is why if you see, uh, I'll show you the pictures eventually, and there you'll see that why uh, you know, people are so comfortable being here because they feel that they are come to their own home because they can relate to the interior, the objects in the interior, everything. They actually relate to it. So they get those kind of positive vibes. And literally, the downside of that is they don't want to go home. They, they really want to spend a lot of time here. Uh, as I said, we are a family of designers, all of us, my both sons, my, my daughter-in-laws, my wife, all of us are designers of you know, in, from different fields. And uh, so each one of them really pitched in. Uh, once they all said that, yes, we are going to do it, then everybody did pitch in and, you know, uh, helped us out. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, whatever product that you see right now is because of all of us. Uh, when I talk about the, the design, the concept, or final outcome of the product, it's basically, as we all know, it's experience design. So whenever somebody comes in, he or she experiences all the senses. And that's how everything just falls into place so beautifully. As I said, we talked about uh, my love for passion uh, for food. I am a foodie myself, but just being a foodie doesn't help. I love to cook. And not only love to cook, I also uh, love to serve when i serve i mean i like to plate the food even at home or whenever i'm uh, at the breakfast story also the serving part also when i'm there I, I love to serve people also i talked about the usp earlier and uh, my unique selling point when i thought of was there is no place where you get a, a big variety a large variety of egg dishes and it's the simple egg that I thought should be uh, should be uh, exploited. That, that that small raw material actually, because it is the you know we have vegetarians, we have non-vegetarians, but little do we realize that we have the largest group of people are vegetarians, if I may call them so. So uh, let us say that they have. I wouldn't, 
maybe it's the wrong word, but it's graduating from vegetarianism to having eggs. So, but then we have a lot of people having egg dishes, a lot of egg dishes, whether it be it, uh, you know, the omelets or the scrambled or those kind of dishes, or even the pancakes and waffles and, you know, anything that has got egg in it. And it's the most versatile raw material, if I'm sure that you will all agree to it, that it's very versatile. So I thought of exploiting that. And when we curated our menu, we customized so many dishes which has egg in it. Of course, we also came to, uh, we, we, we had a problem where people said, Ki aapke egg dishes zyada hai, ya non vegetarian dishes zyada hai. and you know, veg, veg, vegetarian dishes come. Hai. Eventually, we, we added a lot of veg dishes also in the menu, but that came a little later, maybe a year or two later when we started. We also uh, basically, uh, we, we started with a lot of uh, new dishes which we curated. We have the English breakfast, the American breakfast, Belgian, French, what have you. But these were not available anywhere in Nagpur. We started eight years back and we uh, today we have a lot of people copying us, which I feel is a good thing because competition has always been good so that it's, it's so that you also can, uh, you know, uh, you can improve your quality, you can improve your, uh, uh, you can improve your spread also. We also, uh, we do not have any carbonated drinks. That is one thing that we made very clear right from day one, no Pepsis or no, you know, uh, Folks, we are whatever I have at home. I am going to be serving that only. So that is basically why we said we won't have any carbonated drinks. No MSG, no Ajinomoto, no food color. Anything that we don't have at home, we will not be serving. As I said, align to the concept of your home. So everything we make is fresh. We don't have those curries that other people have in restaurants where they keep it for a week and you know they use it. We, whatever we do is we make it fresh for the day. Uh, a very different concept we have is an open kitchen for dining restaurants. Open kitchens are, uh, you know, you don't see them for fast food. Maybe you see open kitchens, but definitely for dining, you don't see open kitchens. So we, we started having that. And basically, we also like to have people coming into the kitchen sometimes or guests come in and, you know, they want to see the kitchen or they want to customize their uh, dish sometimes, so we, we kind of encourage that too. We have a lot of uh, innovations happening at TBS. TBS is the breakfast story, and uh, uh, we give a lot of freedom to our chefs. Though we curate the menu ourselves, but we, we, we give a lot of freedom to them, and we get their ideas and incorporate theirs also. We have a program of amateur chefs at TBS where uh, anybody wants to uh, come in and make a particular dish, uh, whether it is, you know, let's say we have Rajasthani, we have uh, Maharashtrian dishes sometimes, and we give them a platform. Let's say a housewife, we give them a, give them a platform to come and, uh, you know, make it at our place. And... Uh, on the weekend, we also serve those dishes to the people. So, where the chefs themselves come and they, they, you know, they serve it to the people. So, it's a, it's a kind of, you know, something ticked off their bucket list also that they've been able to do. We have a lot of uh, students coming in and uh, uh, actually serving or helping out, and this is done on their own. I mean, they love to do it. Uh, up till now, we probably have more than a hundred students coming over the last eight years. Even as as we speak today, also we have uh, a girl who is a, an architect, but she is also uh, working weekends at our place. We uh, very recently have a, had a school personality development program where students from schools did internship for two weeks here. Uh, right from 7th standard to 11th standard. So uh, that was a fun time for them and for us also. And uh, the parents also really liked this particular program happening. We support a lot of social causes. We encourage young talent. For example, we have uh, uh, very young uh, authors. 
having the book launches happening at our place. Uh, we have young musicians uh, coming and uh, you know showcasing their talent on Saturdays. We have poetry reading sessions, uh, carol singing. I mean, you name it. And you know, we have a lot of our Saturday evenings are pretty happening uh, evenings. Uh, as I said, we encourage art and music. Uh, we have a uh, we have book swap club. People are coming over the weekend and you know having their meetings here also. So these are the kind of things that we encourage at uh, at TBS. Promotion. We uh, only use the social media. Uh, uh, we do not advertise either on holdings or print media or radio. We do not. We believe only in the word of mouth. And uh, Facebook and Instagram, yes, we have to be there. Uh, we also on Zomato, uh, we have a good rating on Zomato of 4.4, but over a 1,000 review uh, you know, span. Uh, timings, uh, we have our own uh, timings. We, are, we, we open at 8 a.m. and we close on Mondays, but we close at 7 p.m. every day. And the reason for 7 p.m., as I mentioned, is again going back to uh, you know what I mentioned earlier about restaurants being very late in closing. We are not into the dinner space, and uh, I also have a life after 7 p.m., so I prefer closing it at 7 p.m. A lot of people talk about pricing and in restaurants, so uh, our pricing is very affordable, light on the pocket. And we definitely don't have any hidden charges. So, and people, we have not had any complaints about any uh, pricing of uh, our, our products. Uh, as I said, the interiors. So this was another interior project for me, but uh, it was much closer to my heart. As I said, it's aligning with the concept of the home. So each area that you would see here is designed differently, like. Similarly, like in your own home, that no two spaces are the same. Similarly, we said that each space has to be designed differently. We have a community table uh, which can seat uh, about 25 people. Uh, but uh, we encourage people you know, to come and sit at the table and eat, even if there are two or three in numbers, so that you know they can they can. Uh, you know, uh, kick up a conversation with others, make friends, uh, and you know, share experiences. So we encourage table sharing. This was uh, before COVID. I'm not sure it's happening so much now, but eventually it might happen again. Uh, one way, very important thing that I had to mention here is that we use, uh, we have used only recycled materials for the entire. Uh, interior so we have not cut any trees for this so it's a message to the society that we are very environment friendly uh, all the chairs all the tables we have bought second hand from uh, uh, the market and we have refurbished them and the new world is upscaling and we have, so we upscaled them and we have we have used them you'll see that in the video also OK, so these are some of the pictures that I've, I'm showing you. This is a community table that I was talking about. And uh, it has been curated with uh, uh, comics, for example. I mean, my younger son, he, is, he spent about three weeks per table uh, sticking those, cutting and sticking those comics on the table. Eventually, we put glass on that. So and it's been, it's been good for the last eight years. We have uh, sections here in the, in the background you can see here, I don't know if you can see the cursor, but we have got newspapers from about 54 countries till date and running uh, where people have sent this. I haven't been to all these countries, but half of them are mine, but the other half have been contributed by a lot of people. Uh, we also have this board here, which has the menu written on it, uh, which is a handwritten menu. We encourage reading, uh, so we have a lot of books, as you can see here. Uh, these books are free for people to take away and return uh, after reading them. 
this is when the tables are joined. Is a close up of that table. Some of the tables, as you can see, have games on them which are printed on them. So, you know, while while the, they're waiting for their food, they can they can actually play games. As you can see in the background here, you know, they are the we have the old radios. We have a table which is full of. Uh, uh, currency notes from all across the world. We have a lot of artists, uh, amateur artists who have done this work, you know, the one in the background as well as in the foreground. You can see these are artists who have done their work here. They have showcased their work here. We just give them either, you know, ceiling space, wall space, doors where they can, they can showcase their work. This is a very nice display. Actually, a uh, photograph doesn't do justice to it. Uh, it, it's got a lot of memorabilia. There was this column here, which uh, uh, I didn't know how to first uh, uh, camouflage. Then I thought of, we have this audio cassettes on this. Uh, we have about 440 audio cassettes uh, stuck on them. The cassettes covers are there and then you have cassettes inside of them also and a lot of people uh, of different age groups enjoy seeing them we don't have the players for that but uh, the cassettes are uh, you know they're very popular here on the right hand side you see we have young uh, uh, kids coming with, uh, with their parents and we encourage them to you know give them crayons and paper and you know they are they're showcasing their talent here on this board on the right I'll just show you a small clip. This is from the outside once you come in. Yeah, so I, 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 I'm sure that you know each and every corner of breakfast story was covered in this. So just two more small clips before I end. Uh, we had uh, we keep on having a lot of you know celebrities coming in. So we had uh, about three four years back we had a test match cricket test match happening between India and uh, New Zealand, and we had Sunny Gavaskar and Matthew Hayden coming to a restaurant. So a small clip showing both of them. Ah. <laughs> 
is when actually Matthew Hayden made some prawns, prawns dish for Sunny Gavaskar at that time. And we all heard about Curly Tails and we were featured with uh, them also. So still clip showing them. So yes, this was all about uh, the breakfast story, uh, friends. Last but not the least, uh, he mentioned about and beyond uh, what. So there are a lot of things, again, on the agenda. But there's something that I wanted to share with you, which, again, has been a little bit of my passion. So I have also started a career in modeling. Uh, this is a different side to the entire story. I thought I'd just share this with you because in many of the ads, you might be probably seeing me. I'm just showing some of them here. So don't be surprised if you see me in some of the ads, either on when you're scrolling on the Instagram, Facebook, or banks. Or if you're going to Goa, the last one is one in Goa. So friends, I had a dream about the, the restaurant and actually, to be honest, I am, I'm living it. And of course, there are many more. But life is all about following a passion, which I am doing diligently. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mukul. Thank you for that really tasty talk. <laughs> we are now open for questions. Uh, Vishnu, Vishnu, uh, over to you. What's your question? Vishnu, we can't hear you. Uh, Vishnu, we are not able to hear you. We should let him know. Vishnu, you need to unmute. Okay, I think Vishnu is very appreciative of you know the work that you have done. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to Vishnu later. <laughs> yes. You have a question from Srivastava, I guess. We have Ashwasa, you have a question? So Mukul, I have a question while you're waiting yes. for other questions to come up. Um, so you know how how much how long did it take you to break even on on your restaurant? Oh God. <laughs> oh. Are you making money? <laughs> or are uh, you you, you, it's a good question. Answer might surprise you. Uh, I'll say less than six months. Okay, in, in less than six months you were positive. Okay, that's very good. Nice. Yeah. Prashant, what's your question? Yeah, hi. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm from Bangalore. I'm an IDC too. 
uh, nice uh, and uh, tc breakfast so next time we are in uh, nagpur yeah, we'll most welcome <laughs> was it so and beyond so any plans of expansion i know it's a family business and our passion no uh, it's a very very good question and i was hoping somebody would ask it because uh, as you can see this this place has been curated with a lot of heart and soul uh, it's very difficult to franchise a heart and soul right uh there are there have been in the last 8 years there have been more than 50 odd people who have asked me from all across the country you know about for a franchise but uh it's very difficult to franchise this particular model it's only if i want to expand it myself but then again i cannot be at two places at the same time the reason for starting this was a passion uh, and uh, i know it's a family business but doesn't mean that it can't be but somebody else has to you know uh who's as passionate as me should be able to run it and uh, finding that is uh, is a little difficult because most of the people when they ask when i ask them they say that no we have got people to run it we have got the money we got the space but i'm not going to be running it but then the essence and the ethos of breakfast story will be lost if somebody else is going to run the place but i'm sure uh, you are able to help people who have similar passions to i'll be more than helpful if you know somebody in bangalore i'll be more than helpful to you know i'll probably up. be in touch with you in a few years let's see mogul <laughs> <laughs> mogul you need to become a mentor <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm a recipe yeah. for food you can write a recipe for how to start a restaurant it's nice to see atwankar sir thanks hi how are you i am good sir how are you good to see you I'm hoping that I'll be able to visit that restaurant. I've been keeping yeah, it on most, my list. Most welcome. I'm looking forward to you visiting Nagpur and the restaurant both. Yeah. No, it will be wonderful. I think it's a great story. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Both both ways, it's a great story. It's the name is also interesting, and what you're doing is interesting. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And I, I can I, tell you at the beginning of the, the talk when I started that I would I would give a lot of credit. Uh, you know since 1981 to whatever i did is only to idc though i had my architecture background yes i know but idc has changed me forever after that who did actually I, 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 it was very happy to see that you become a good businessman also <laughs> uh, well thank you i mean yes uh, i i can i am talking from a, a two different angles one is actually business as business the second one is to also become a businessman because you sell your ideas very well <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean maybe this the marketing skill i've developed over the years nothing else good thank you sir thank you very much mukul we should target to have our 100th talk from your office from your restaurant absolutely that would be wonderful please plan it <laughs> <laughs> we got 57 more to go yes very soon will be there yes yeah yeah ragram go ahead uh hi mukul this is ragu here how are you i'm good ragu how are you long time i'm absolutely fine uh after seeing so many instagrams and photographs but still it's a due to come to nagpur and uh, have yes. a break so, yes yes i will looking forward what's to the next I think the dog which is just going around is a labrador right Yeah yeah he's he's my lab Ah what's he, his name was, His name is Jazz and uh, he he's he was roaming around when uh, we took the video we didn't want to stop him and so he just <laughs> he, he just vaulted vault uh, you know wafted into it or vault in falls into it you know but we did, we just loved that I mean that that video has come out so nice because of him I think <laughs> Yeah. Good. Nice seeing you. You know, uh, listening to you after so long. Yeah. So long. Yeah. It's been really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice to connect. We'll, we'll, I'll 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 call you for some occasion in uh, Punjab again that uh, you make it. Sure. Sure. Look forward yeah. to it. Ragu. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mukul. Great. Thank, it you. Is. Thank you, Ragu. Yeah. It's nice, so nice to be addressing and talking to you know fellow editions and alma maters actually. 
Nimish, maybe you should plan a IDCN meeting in Breakfast Story. Yeah, I was telling uh, Nimish, uh, there are a lot of uh, IDCNs in Nagpur also. Definitely, sir. We need to do that. The 100th rock, maybe. Yeah. So, Mukul, a slightly different question and relating to your earlier work. So, do you think COVID has changed the way uh, the whole construction industry, the interiors industry? What's your perspective? What's your uh, sense? Uh, from yeah, to be honest, it depends on the sector that we are talking. I mean, if it is the IT sector or whether it's the finance sector, uh, a lot of people uh, are working from home. Number one, so real estate space is not needed as much as it it was earlier, uh, and these these changes are quite permanent. I would say, uh, for example, you know, my children in Bangalore are working from home. They haven't been to their offices at all for the last three years. After even changing a particular job, they have still not gone to their offices, and and the, they're working for companies who have got about 600, 700 employees. Mm. Now, just imagine if one office is doing that, the real estate, you know, uh, they don't need offices, they're just working from home. So I think a lot of things have changed for the, I won't say for the good, but definitely uh, permanently changed, actually. So uh, where interior designing is concerned, I don't think too much of uh, changes are happening now. Earlier, in one year back when the designing used to happen, we used to talk of, you know, people sitting far apart and, you know, having physical barriers between them. Today, after, you know, when people say that COVID is not there anymore and, you know, we have gone past all that, uh, again, the designing has come back to, you know, what it was in pre-COVID days. So, or at least those companies where offices still are needed. So I think uh, I've been... I'm, I'm working on six projects right now, and all of them are, you know, they're nothing, nothing to do with COVID. Everybody has forgotten COVID, where interior designing is concerned, at least. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So we have another two minutes, so we can take another one question or two. So I think just follow, following up from you know what you said, maybe the space is, uh, the commercial space is right, right for disruption. Maybe offices need to become restaurants <laughs> or something different needs to happen. No, a lot of people, see, you see, uh, in the afternoons, we get a lot of people who come on their own, just alone. Uh, they're working on their laptops in the restaurant. Uh, not even as a co-working space, you know, they just come there, they're there for two hours, they're working from uh, that place, they've got a good Wi-Fi connection. Today, that is more important than anything else, I think. And once they, you know, they, they finish their work, they pack up and leave. And this this happens in the afternoons, you know, every time I see, they, because we've got IT parks nearby, um, we have a lot of colleges nearby. So there are students also attending their online classes from the restaurants also. So th this is this has now become a new uh, you know new age thing now you know being online, like exactly what is happening right now with us uh, you know we are having this meeting online and uh, you know physical uh, you know need for ha being physically together for certain functions or anything is is really not needed. If it can be done online, it can be it it will be done online. Hmm. Yeah, that that's a big. Paradigm shift, I guess, and we are and moving. Paradigm shift, yes. And the only thing is that even if I have to do it online, I need to find a space to do it. So, <laughs> exactly. Then, and which better space than uh, you know being in a restaurant? <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So, so thank you so much for that wonderful talk, uh, Mukul. And I might say, you know, very tasty and appetizing talk because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we we are going to have more interactions uh at at tbs and uh, it. i'm sure a lot of us would want to now start their own restaurants <laughs> or become a franchisee <laughs> more than more than welcome to help out anybody in this space okay so thank you so much everyone for joining us today 
we look forward to have you having you over for our 44th talk next week uh, good night thank you good night i'll stop recording now